Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. We're making that transition into fall now and this weather change has got my sinuses all messed up. So please excuse my weak and crackly voice during this video. So today I've got the Federal Punch rimfire ammunition out. I've got the 22 Magnum and the 22 Long Rifle. I featured both of these ammos on my channel before, but I've never showed them side by side together and I've never shot them into the same gel block beside one another. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Now these are both rimfire cartridges, of course, but they go about their business in totally opposite ways. The 22 Magnum uses a heavy for caliber bullet with a 45 grain jacket at hollow point, while the 22 Long Rifle uses a light for caliber, 29 grain flat notes. Advertised velocities are both taken from a two inch barrel. With the 22 Magnum, we see 1,000 feet per second. With the 22 Long Rifle, we see 1,070 feet per second. So there again, you can see that they're really shooting for the high velocity out of the 22 Long Rifle. A 29 grain bullet in a standard 22 Long Rifle case is what we know as a 22 Long but they're using a stinger length case here. A stinger length case is a little longer than your standard 22 long rifle case. So take a look at these cartridges. This is that 22 Magnum. See that nice deep hollow point there on the end. These have done very good in my testing on this channel. And this is a 22 long rifle. Little flat nose, both these are nickel plated. Very nicely done by Federal. And since both of these are advertised for use in short barrels, I'm gonna be using the one and seven eighth inch barreled Ruger LCR for the 22 long rifle. And the one and seven eighth inch barreled Smith & Wesson 351C for the 22 Magnum. Now, if this barrel looks a little bit longer than the one on the Ruger, it looks like a true two inch barrel. It's not really. It has that standoff at the end where the Ruger doesn't. So it makes the barrel look a little longer, at least that barrel shroud. So that's the two revolvers I'm gonna be using today. I've got a gel block set up over here. We'll get to that, but first, I wanted to show you the chronograph footage that I that I got the other day from both of these revolvers. So first off, I shot the Ruger LCR with the 22 long rifle punch, and it did really well. I got an average of 1,129 feet per second with an extremely good standard deviation of about eight feet per second. So as you can see, it easily beat the advertised velocity of 1,070 feet per second. With the 22 Magnum, I got an average velocity of 1,082 feet per second with a standard deviation of 35. Again, well above the advertised velocity of 1,000 feet per second on this cartridge. So on this day, out of these two revolvers and over this particular chronograph, I am getting about a 47 feet per second difference between the 22 long rifle and the 22 Magnum with the 22 long rifle being the faster of the two. So I've got a clear ballistics 10% gel block here. These are the same gel blocks that I use in all my videos for consistency's sake. I'm gonna shoot the bare block first and then we'll come back and throw some denim over the front of it and shoot through some denim and see if that changes anything. So up first, I've got the Ruger LCR and the 22 long rifle punch ammunition. And then I'll shoot the Smith & Wesson 351C with the 22 Magnum punch ammunition. Up 
Okay, so taking a look at it, this is where the 22 long rifle went in. This is where the 22 Magnum entered. We swing around to the side here and check this out. I would not have predicted this. They stopped at almost an identical depth, which is about 12 and 3 quarter inches. Looks like the 22 long rifle might have edged it out as far as penetration goes by about a sixteenth of an inch or so. It's very close. And those wound tracks aren't touching. If you look at it from the top, nowhere do they touch each other. That is pretty cool. And the wound tracks themselves are very, very similar. This one is the 22 long rifle and the 22 Magnum made the same track except a little farther in. The same cavity there. How cool is that? I did not think they would look this similar in the gel block. So let's try that again, but this time I've got two layers of denim on the front of the block. Let's see if that makes a difference in how these perform. There's the 22 long rifle. And here's the 22 Magnum. Here's our denim. It's just a pants leg piece that I cut out. Come around to this side and it looks like that both of these bullets penetrated farther with the denim in place, but the 22 Magnum round had more bounce back. It actually settled in exactly about the same depth as it did without the denim. But that 22 long rifle round settled in even deeper. As far as the tracks and channels go, the 22 long rifle left a bigger cavity. I don't think you can see the 22 Magnum cavity here. It is not very big at all. I'm trying to find it for you in the viewfinder. But it's just a uh, it's a lot smaller than the 22 long rifle cavity. If you trace this one out, and none of these uh, tracks are touching each other. I did check that. It did leave a little bigger cavity where that hollow point stopped. But that 22 long rifle, that's impressive. It came in right there and went, a, I'm sorry, <laughs> right there and went across. It left a pretty good cavity there, certainly bigger than the 22 Magnum left. Then it slimmed down to hardly anything here and then stopped. I am impressed with both of these rounds, but especially that 22 long rifle round. Mostly just because of how surprised I am at how well it performed against the 22 Magnum. I'm going to cut these out of the block and we'll take a look at them. Okay, so I cut those bullets out of the gel block. And as you can see by looking at them here, they both performed exactly like they were supposed to, denim or no denim. The hollow points on the 22 Magnum cartridge expanded and looked just like you would expect them to. Didn't matter if the denim was there or not. And the flat points, of course, penetrated deep 
like you would expect them to do. What surprised me on this gel block test was the wound channel that that little flat point was able to leave. It was very comparable to the hollow point of the 22 Magnum. And in that second shot, when I had the denim up, it, it was even more impressive than the 22 Magnum was. So that kind of surprised me. You know, I do these tests. I don't know the outcome before I do them. I do them because they're fun and it provides you guys with a little bit of insight if you're looking at these rounds or uh, something in particular that I'm showing that can give you a piece of the puzzle you're looking for. Uh, of course, the benefits to the 22 long rifle, or it's about half the price or, or maybe even less than the 22 Magnum punch. Talking about the punch rounds here. And with mo most of your self-defense revolvers, you're going to get an extra round with the 22 long rifle. Just like this example I've got here, this little LCR in 22 long rifle has eight rounds. This 351C will hold seven. So something else to think about, that extra round and the expense on this ammunition. Just doing the math on the numbers we got over the chronograph today, the 22 long rifle punch delivers 82 foot-pounds of energy, while the 22 magnum punch delivers 117 foot-pounds of energy. So there's no denying that the 22 Magnum was the more powerful round today. It's just looking at that gel block, you can't tell much difference between the two. It was, it was almost a dead heat. But that's really all I've got for you guys today. Always remember, if anybody asks you to give up a little of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good. And I'll talk to y'all again soon, hopefully with my voice back next time.